Welcome back. In the previous lecture, we were talking about the metasploit and in that the payload like metaoperator payload, we talked about that. But when we try to connect with the remote system, sometimes it asks you the password. So in this session, we are going to talk about the John the Ripper, the king of password crackers. So it is hard to imagine discussing a topic like the basics of a hacking without discussing passwords and password cracking. So there are several reasons why a pen tester would be interested in cracking passwords. First and foremost, this is a great technique for elevating and escalating privileges. So uh, consider the, that, you know, assume that you were able to, uh, you know, compromise a target system. But after you know, logging in, you discover that you have no rights on that system. So no matter what you do and you are unable to read and write in the target file and folders. And even worse, you are unable to install any new software. So this is often the case when you get access to a low privileged account belonging to the user or guest group. So if the account you accessed has few or no rights, you will be unable to perform many of the required steps to further compromise the system. In this case, password cracking is currently a useful way to escalate privileges and often allows to gain administrative rights on a target mission. Another reason for cracking passwords and escalating privileges is that many of the tools we run as pen testers require administrative level access in order to install and execute properly uh, like you require the sudo uh, administrative privileges, the super, uh, superior user, super user administrative privileges. So pen testers may find themselves in a situation where they were able to crack the local uh, administrator password and how this password turned out to be the exact same password that the network administrator was using for the domain administrator account. So if we access the password hashes on a target machine, the John D. Ripper, JTR, a password cracking tool, can discover the plain text version of the password. As you know, password hashes are the encrypted and uh, the uh, scramble version of a plain text password. So how to you know deal with them? So to do that, uh, the password hashes, as said, uh, you know that that is encrypted and scramble version of your plain text password. So these hashes can be accessed remotely or locally regardless of how we access the hash file. So the steps and tools required to crack the passwords remain same for the, you know, uh, uh, whether you are uh, cracking the hashes locally or remotely. So the password cracking consists of two parts. One is the locate and download the target system's password hash file and second one is use a tool to convert the hash that is the encrypted password into a plain text. So there are two steps are there. First, you need to identify the password file or locate the password file and target system. Then you convert that hash value into plain text. If that hash value is encrypted, you need to decrypt it also. So most systems do not store your password as the plain text value you entered, right? So, but rather they store an encrypted version of the password. So this encrypted version is called as the hash value. So in this hash value, 
the different systems use different you know the hashing algorithms to create their passwords right so what is uh, so most systems store their password hashes in a single location so this hash file usually contains the encrypted password uh so this is usually uh, you know uh, contains the encrypted passwords for several users and system accounts so unfortunately gaining access to the password hashes is only half the battle because simple viewing or even memorizing a password hash is not enough to determine the plain text so this is because technically it is not supposed to be possible to work backward from a hash to plain text so by its definition a hash once encrypted it is never mean to be decrypted again so so in that reason considering by just you know if you consider the following example like uh, assume that we have located a password hash uh, and we want to discover the plain text or the plain text value so then it is important to understand that in most cases we need the plain text password not the hashed password so entering the hashed value into the system will not get us access because this would simply cause the system to hash the hash again so in order to discover the plain text version of password we need to circle through a series of steps first we need to select a hashing algorithm whether it is rsa you know uh, secure hash algorithm family that sha or rc5 or rsa algorithm or a you need to identify its hash algorithm first then second we pick a plain text word we a plain text word will be picked out and we encrypt that plain text word with the hash algorithm which is identified here so then it generates a hash file that you know digest value will be there so finally we compare this newly hashed value with the uh the hash values which we retrieved from the hash i mean the password file if both are matching then you are guessing you are guess uh, guessing plain text is successful and you can use that plain text to log in so if the hashes match we know the plain text password because no two different plain text words uh you know uh, have the same exact hash values so that is the first reason so here you can see that if you take any uh, in this case the input the plain text input to the hash function that is the arbitrary length in text it may be any you know length in the text that plain text message that when it is given as an input to the hash function it generates a fixed length hash value that is not reversible this hash value cannot be reversible back to your plain text so then as we said the passwords can be i think you know cracked in two different way either locally or remotely if it is locally means you have to have the access to the target machine you entered on the target machine to get that particular hash func- uh, i mean the the hash passwords if you are running on a remote one then you need to connect to the local machine target machine through internet remotely and then try to identify or locate that password hashes to download on your attacker machine for cracking those passwords so the speed at which the jtr uh, uh, can generate password hashes will vary that depends upon which algorithm you are using whether you are using the sha1 SHA2, SHA3, or RC5 algorithm, RSA algorithm. That depends. Based on the algorithm being used to create the hash values, as well as the performance of your computer architecture, the hardware part.
So this JTR includes a nifty feature that allows you to benchmark your computer's performance. So this benchmark will be measured in cracks per second. That measures in cracks per second. So to know that you know the the JTR dictionary on the target system uh, and uh, on the you know operating system, which operating system that you are using. They, you can just find this file under the user share John option. So let me quickly show you that. Uh, the Windows machine. Yeah, let me just quickly show you that where it is going to be located. Let's go to Kali. And in this Kali, if you go to the target machine, I mean the your attacker machine, if you change the directory to users, the users share folder, there you can, you know, if you give the command ls, you can find that the John command, uh, John directory, where it finds the, uh, uh, the all the possible word list that uh, you know the benchmark that uh, let me just quickly find this john yeah here is the directory so we can get into that directory go to the directory john oh sorry cd So join directory there you can view the ls command here it where you can find the benchmarks also for this the join directory file okay so in this join directory you will find the the password list uh, the word list which is used to cracking the passwords either locally or remotely so there you can find the the password dot lst so once you are in the join directory, you can issue the comma, you know, command uh, to test uh, what is the cracks per second. To test that, we can issue the command here by just giving the command like, you know, uh, by running the command once you are in the directory. John, by giving this double spaces and test. So it will give you, you know, uh, you know for different uh, 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 hashing algorithm like data encryption standard algorithm with the 128 bits length it is so the benchmark uh, for you know the uh, cracking the password uh, the benchmark is given here is the crack the password per second the benchmark is 13810k cracks per second in real but on virtual machine, in real uh, machine, it takes that much. On virtual machine, it takes 7038k cracks per second on the virtual machine. So as it gives the different benchmarks by running by simply running this command. So this will provide you with a list of performance metrics, this John uh, command. The performance metrics and let you know how efficient your system is at generating guesses based on your hardware and the algorithm being used to hash the passwords for different different algorithms like for blowfish you know what is the you know cracking part of what so it gives you know different for different algorithms for md5 cryptography you know how much time it takes for md5 the message digest file uh, the algorithms are it can find uh, the other, uh, uh, the hashing algorithms like SHA-128 bit, the SHA-128 bit uh, fixed length size, which uses the advanced encryption standard. So here, you know, the, the, the password cracking can be performed as either a local attack or a remote attack. So we will focus on password cracking from the local perspective first. So we'll try to do that in the local perspective. So how it is going to be work. So in the local password cracking, 
let me just quickly get into that in the local password cracking you just need to know that before we can crack the passwords on local machine that means you are perfectly sitting on the local machine on the target machine and then you are having the uh, the access to physical access to that local machine suppose then we first have to locate the password hash files so to locate the password hash files you know uh, uh, we we one we needs to uh, locate that password hacking files on the target machine so we'll just try to uh, get into the the system, the target system. Let me just go to this window and on, on this target. Suppose if this is my target system, then uh, uh, the most systems store the encrypted password hashes in a single location. So in Windows based system, in Windows operating systems, the hashes are stored in a special file called the security account manager file that SAMP file. So on to go to, to locate that file, go to the my computer where your operating system is running in the local disk, suppose disk C. In that go to the Windows. In Windows needs to go to the system 32 folder. So in system 32 directory you can find the SAM file. Uh, let me just quickly look at the SAM file. Okay. Yeah. So we'll try to find. Oh. Yeah, we are in the system folder. In that system folder, to go to the configuration folder, in the configuration, we are able to locate this SAM file. So now that we know the location of the security account manager, that is SAM file. So we need to extract the password hashes from the file. So because the SAM file holds some very important information. So Microsoft has wisely added some additional security features to help protect the file. So to protect this file, uh, you know, uh, it is, uh, you know, uh, in the Windows file, it is given some of the additional features or advanced attributes to uh, it that compress or encrypted the attributes are there. So the first protection that the SAM file actually logged when the operating system boots up. So this means that while the uh, OS is running, we do not have the ability to open or copy this particular file. So if you try uh, to copy this file, so um, uh, if you try to open this file in the notepad or some way, it gives the process cannot access the file because it is being used by another process. So in addition to the lock, the entire SAM file is encrypted and not viewable so the SAM file is still encrypted. So we need to use a tool to access the hashes. So the required tool is built into the Kali, which we have just seen, right? So after booting the target system to an alternate operating system. So how to, you know, uh, copy this. So for that, what needs to do, you know, on this particular windows, we need to have an alternate booting system, that alternate operating system, which should run on the, uh, uh, you know, uh, which should have an alternate operating system on another drive. Suppose it is having some other drive to you know, run this, the Microsoft Windows, right? So like that, if you run that, instead of Microsoft Windows, if you run the Kali Linux, because only Kali Linux is having the John the Ripper tool to crack the password. So you can install the Kali Linux as an alternative operating system on this Windows, on this Windows, then you will get the terminal. You will get the terminal, uh, you know, to uh, open that folder that, you know, uh, you can to run this John the uh, the uh, to run this particular command, the John command to uh, for password cracking, 
you required this terminal on the Windows operating system. So the first thing we need to do is to mount the local hard drive on the target machine, target system. Then be sure to mount the drive containing the Windows folders. So we can accomplish this by opening a terminal and typing once this uh, uh, this particular uh, alternative operating system installed on the Windows. Then we can mount that by giving uh, by uh, to mount the uh, local hard drive that is Windows operating this entire C drive. This entire C drive to mount this entire C drive into a separate drive uh, and if if the window uh, kali linux runs on this machine then we just use this kali linux prompt to mount the i'm just giving the demonstration only but i'm not in i haven't installed this operating system there so then we give the mount command and give the the dev and the sda and give the space and you use the command that mnt sd sda1 so it is important that you mount the correct drive as not all target systems will have dev sd1 so if you are unsure about which drive to mount you can run the command uh, in the command prompt that the f disk minus l if you run this command oh sorry it is permission is not given sudo okay by running this command you will get the exact hard drive that you can find here this is uh, in this case, the disk is SDA, not SDA1. So that depends, uh, you know, for different, uh, uh, you know, targets, the different mount will be there. So if this FDisk tool will list each of the drives available on your target system and should help you to determine which drive you need to mount. So in this case, you need to mount the, uh, you know, uh, the Dave sd1 for mounting purpose right so you may also need to create a mount point into uh, in the uh, directory so to do that you know we simply use the command that for make directory we we give that we use the command make dir uh, directory for what for mounting purpose the mount the SDA, so so mount this SDA in this case simple because here we are having the local hard drive with SD1. But when this operating system runs on Windows, this may be changed. That so once you have successfully mounted this local drive in Kali, then you will be able to browse the the Windows uh, C drive. Uh, on the target machine. So finally, you will get the command that, uh, uh, so by issuing this command, cmd mount sda windows system 32 command, by issuing that, let me just show you, okay, yeah. Yeah, so by, by giving this cd mount sda1, which you know created on windows operating system where the complete C drive of your Windows, that is Windows System 32 configuration, when you get into that, then because you are having the Windows complete C drive, which is mounted on the local drive of Kali. So then you entered into the Windows System 32, where you can find this directory SAM file. So if everything goes, uh, has gone as planned, then you should be in the directory containing this SAM file and it is a duplicate file. So to view this content of the current folder, because you are not booted into the operating system on Windows, you are booted with the alternate operating system that is Kali. So that will allow you uh, to view the content of the current folder that issue this by issuing this ls command you can identify the SAM file over there.
So once you identify the SAM file, then you know in, in the figure you can see that by when you run this, the Kali Linux on Windows operating system and for loading purpose, which drive to load, if you give the fdisk, you know, minus L command, then it will give you that what is the dev SD1 is there. So then you need to, the second step, you need to, uh, you know, a boot on this particular uh, operating system to create, to create the, uh, uh, what you call, uh, so we, we use this particular information, if this information to mount this drive onto our, uh, uh, the local drive that is mount SD1. So mount dev SD1 into your MNT SD1. So mounting this, that duplicating, right? So that we can access the local hard drive. So we can, we move into the directory by containing this SAM file by using this command cd mount because now we are in this local drive so mount sd1 windows system 32 configuration so in the configuration file if you give the ls you're finding the sam file here in the step six so now that we have located the sam file and we can use a tool called the uh, you know the sam dump two. the file name is sam then we use the file that sam dump2 to extract the hashes. So this command, which is runs in Kali Linux. So at this point, once this sam, uh, which is dumped on our, you know, the local drive where the, your Kali Linux is running, that can extract this sam file. But here you can see that this sam file is still encrypted. So first, once you dump, first step is over, then you need to unencrypt this copy of your SAM file. So we need to run this SAM dump 2 again. So this SAM dump 2 utilize a file on the local machine called system uh, to decrypt this SAM file. When you run this SAM dump 2 by giving this command system, okay, to decrypt this SAM file. So the system file is located in the same directory as the SAM file. So where, you know, uh, you can see this directory on the same windows, when it goes to the, the C drive, windows 32, there you go to the configuration, the configuration where SAM file is located, in the same one, you are having the system file also. So this SAM dump two utilizes this system file, and uh, you know uh, it issues the SAM dump two command, which is followed by the name and location of this system that is C drive Windows System thirty two configuration. So by following, by, which is followed by the name and location of this SAM file. This SAM file location is also C drive Windows system 32. So earlier as we had discussed that CD command to navigate to the Windows system 32 configure folder. So at this point, uh, you know, uh, you can use the command, uh, the next by issuing this command, let me quickly run it, okay. So by issuing this command sam dump2 in the terminal of Kali Linux by giving system and the sam file. Okay. So where, because you know, here it changed uh, the, the uh, before that you were having Windows system 32 configuration in that you are having sam file. Similarly, because in the same folder system is also there. Then you can use this, the, this, uh, uh, the uh, greater symbol and store those uh, hash values which are there in this SAM file when it is unencrypted into a specific file that has that txt which is in the directory temporary directory. So this this by issuing this command it invoked this SAM dump program and append the the uh, hashes this command will save that results into this hashes.txt in Kali temporary directory. 
So after that, you can use the cat command to ensure you have a local copy of a hashes.txt file as shown by just giving the command cat, the temporary where it is stored temporary hashes.txt. So once you have that text file, okay, so then uh, you, you will see this, the command that by issuing this, uh, uh, the, the SAM dump2 uh, command for running the SAM dump2 system SAM, that is temporary hashes.txt, where it is, we already entered into this mount local hard drive where Windows operating system folder in that system 32, the configuration folder. We are going to find both the file system file as well as SAM file by issuing the command SAM dump2 and giving these two arguments and save the output in TXT, you will get this hash values. So in the hash values, you find that the original, uh, you know, the uh, root BT, in that it is giving that administrator is one user, guest is another user, Maggie is another user, Molly. So, and their passwords are in the hash values here. So now that we have the password hashes saved uh, in the hashes.txt file. So now begin the process of cracking the password. So to crack the passwords, to accomplish this task, we will use this John the Ripper tool. So in John the Ripper tool, uh, you know, that is the open uh, you know, Ripper tool, but how the Microsoft creates these password hashes that we need to understand so that it is easy to select the appropriate algorithm for decrypting it. So that is the Microsoft utilizes the hash algorithm called LAN manager or LM hashes we said, LAN manager hashes, LM hashes. So first, when these LM hashes are created, the entire password is converted into the uppercase first. So converting all the characters in the password, that is the combination of characters, um, you know, upper letter or lower letter, it first converts all those letters into the uppercase in the fundamental flow that greatly reduce the strength of your password. So this is because technically if we hash the word called suppose password, the P is capital here and here is the password P is small here. So though they are only difference in the single case letter or uppercase and lowercase letter, but the output of this particular, the LM hashes is completely converted into the, uh, the upper cases only. So if you have any you know, combination like password or password, you know, here P is capital, here is PAS is capital, but whatever it may be, it is first convert it into the password in the upper case. So instead of requiring an attacker to guess all these possible passwords, the attacker only needs to make the single guess of converting all those capital letter passwords. So the further in LM hashes, the further compound uh, this issue that every LM password is 14 characters in length. 14 characters in length. So that 14 character further divided into 7-7 seven, seven characters as one group. So if the now, if a password is 14 characters, the password is truncated at 14 characters. So the final nail in the coffin of LM password is the fact that all stored passwords, which are now 14 characters in the length and actually get uh, split in half and stored as two individual seven character passwords. So the length of password is one sure of its strength that you know the uh, unfortunately because of this lm design the max password that needs to be cracked is seven characters only there is no need of cracking the second individual characters so to uh, take uh, you know by just considering by take a moment to consider these flaws in this case so john will actually attempt to crack each of these seven characters so by taking, uh, you know, when taking together, they represent quite uh, blow the blow to security of uh, any systems. So suppose our favorite network admin, like you know Ben, is uh, utilizing this LM hashes on the Windows machine. Suppose 
so he always aware that uh, the danger of this weak passwords so he creates a password with the combination of your you know upper letters lower letters special characters like super secret password and uh, you know the offers to be at the hash and this so the combination of this but unfortunately you know the ben um he is operating under a false sense of sense security that his complex password will actually undergo a series of changes that make it much less secure uh, because of this lm hashes so first the password is converted to all upper case like a super secret password and the second it divides this password into two groups two individual seven characters so then it finds the first seven character is super secret pas so finally the password is broken into the equal halves of your seven characters each so it will get that super secret and create password so when a hacker or pen tester gets a hold of ben's password the attacker has to crack two simple all upper case seven character passwords so that is a drastically simpler task than the original password of super secret password so fortunately microsoft addressed these issues and now use a more secure algorithm called ntlml uh, the uh, hashes algorithm to create its password hashes so however a pen tester you know uh, one needs to still find the system which is utilizing the the strong uh, utilizing and storing this lm hashes on the target machines so modern version of windows uh, do not use or store this lm hashes uh, even so uh, there are options to enable this lm on the uh, target system the systems so this feature is implemented to support the backward compatibility with the legacy systems so you should always upgrade or discontinue the use of any legacy software that requires you to use the lm hashes and old systems often put your entire network at risk so the jtr the john the ripper is capable of cracking passwords by using a password dictionary or by brute forcing letter combinations so for password cracking it use password dictionary or brute forcing the combin letter combinations so the password dictionaries are pre compiled list of plain text words and letter combinations so one advantage of using a password dictionary is that it is very difficult and it is sorry it is very efficient for comparing the uh, password hashes so the main disadvantage of its technique is that if the exact password is not in the dictionary john the ripper jtr will be unsuccessful so another method for cracking passwords is to brute force letter combination so brute force letter combinations means that the password cracker will generate passwords in a sequential order until it has exhausted every possible combinations so for example the password cracker will begin by guessing the password uh, a single letter like a so if the uh, target guess is unsuccessful then it will try to guess the aa then aaa so if that guess is unsuccessful it will move to the aa and so on so this process is typically much slower than a dictionary guessing attack but the advantage is that given enough time the password will be eventually be found in this brute force uh, letter combinations so then jtr is a built in kali as said so we can run this john by simply typing the password commands that you know uh, by giving the command like 
John, and where the hashes are cracked, the local SAM file is identified, and that is by using SAM dump2, it is converted into the hashes.txt file where it is stored on Kali Linux in temporary directory. By giving John and that a hashes file in this command prompt, John is used to invoke this password cracking JTR program. And the next part of this temporary hashes.txt is used to specify the location of the hashes that we extracted using SAM dump2. So if you saved your hashes file to different locations, you will need to change this path. So John is pretty good about guessing the type of password you want to crack, but it is always best to specify. So to specify the password type, we must use the format. The format is, use the command that minus minus format is equal to format name command. So here, what is the format name? Whether those hashes are LM hashes or NT LM hashes, which format uh, file hashes it is having. So John is capable of cracking dozens of different password hashes. You can find the details of each in the documentation or on the openwall.com website. But recall that most modern Windows systems makes use of the NTLM hashes. So if your target uses this NTLM hashes, you will need to append this format, like you know, format is equal to NT, uh, the NT. So by using this switch to your original command, which is issued in the command prompt that these are the hashes in this text file, which are in the format of the dash dash format is equal to NT hashes. Then after issuing this appropriate command to instruct this JTR to run, the program will attempt to crack the passwords containing in the hashes.txt file. So when John is successful in finding a password, it will display it to the screen uh, that, you know, what are the usernames and their passwords. So in this case, when it is run, the passwords, it finds there are four password hashes with no different salts. So one is the, the uh, for guest, uh, for administrator, the password is secret. For guest, there is no password. For Molly, the password is KT. For Maggie, Maggie the password is doggies. So here uh, you will find a brief recap of these uh, steps which we use to crack this Windows password locally. That first you need to set down your target machine. Then boot your target machine uh, you know, uh, to your backtrack or an alternate operating system. Where well, you may use the live CD or your USB drive then you need to mount that drive. So mount the local hard drive that is C drive on this USB where your you know, alternative operating system is running. Then in the Kali Linux terminal, you issue the command SAM dump2 and to extract the hashes that SAM dump2. So before going to that, in that local drive, you should enter into C drive, Windows directory, system32 directory, configure directory, then uh, once you entered in that, then you start issuing the command that SAM dump2 and the system, which is used to uh, decrypt this SAM file and the give argument SAM and try to store in the hashes.txt file. And after that, use that file for JTR you know, password cracking. For that, you run that by using the John, the ripper, that is J John the temporary uh, hashes.txt file and its format that is empty format. So this is the local password cracking method. In the next session, we'll try to discuss the remote password cracking.